Well, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Los Angeles, California, International Touring DJ, please give a warm Benjamin welcome to the 2018 Distinguished Alumnus Award, Mr. Henry Falk. right now I was like what is he doing up there he had C's in my class <laughs> um, uh, first off I want to thank the Benjamin Alumni Association for setting this whole thing up with me uh, Jenna and Matt um, when they first told me I'm getting an award I was like oh great yeah just send it in the mail and Jenna's like no 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 that's not how it works you have to fly here and there's uh, you have to talk in front of the entire high school and I was like um, Jenna I'm not doing that I'm sorry <laughs> like I'm not doing that so uh, She's like, okay, just think about it for a couple days, and you can get back to me on that. And so I took about three days, I thought about it, I was like, all right, I'm just going to do it. So I was like, let's just do it. This, this, this entire school has meant so much to me, and I, I felt like I wanted to give back in any way I could. I um, also want to take a moment and uh, dedicate this award to my father, uh, Henry Fong Sr. He passed away two years ago, but he spent a lot of time on the board of directors here at the school, and he really worked hard to make sure we had a good education. So I just want to take a moment and uh, dedicate that to him. Um, so yeah, I just want to take you guys a little bit through my journey and how I got from point A to point B. Um, I was a part of the 14 year club here uh, and I made a lot of lifelong friendships and bonds that helped me out um, throughout my entire career path and I kind of was unaware of it at the time. But um, I think my entire story is a little bit of proof that if you don't fit in, uh, there's always hope. Uh, I felt like when I was here, uh, I didn't really fit in anywhere academically. Um, I wasn't a star athlete or anything. And I kind of had a hard time finding my place um, in the world, I guess. So I went on to University of Central Florida. Seniors, anyone go to UCF? Woo! <laughs> Good night. Um, uh, I ended up at UCF. Uh, I joined the Alpha Tau Omega fraternity there. And uh, really met an awesome group of guys. And I kind of started finding um, my place in things, and I, I ran for social chair of the fraternity. And I kind of found that I was good at so setting up social interactions, setting up parties and events for the fraternity. And I just kind of became known as the guy that just like planned stuff and knew what was going on and, and, that, and that sort of thing. So from there, I ended up setting up my own event company. It was called Riot. Um, I started the first dance music event at the college, and this was in about 2009, 2010 when dance music started getting really popular. And I was like, I, you know, I was like, I think dance music's gonna blow up, and DJs are gonna be big, and all this. So me and a couple friends, we went into one of the local uh, bars, and we're like, hey, is it cool if we, you know, start a dance music night here? And they're like, okay. So we worked out a we worked out a deal with them, and. Uh, we would set it up every Wednesday and, and come in. And uh, the first night we set up the event, uh, I think about 15 people showed up. And we're like, oh man, we got some work to do. So I kind of started my own like grassroots kind of marketing campaign. And uh, I, I learned how to use Facebook advertising before Facebook advertising really got popular. It was super new, no one really knew how to use it at the time. So I, I figured out how to use the advertising platform on uh, Facebook. I set up a, like a, kind of a marketing campaign, and then I did uh, some like grassroots stuff like flyers. And sure enough, uh, I just kept hammering away at it every week by week, and the night became like, we were just a bunch of no-name DJs in Orlando, and then all of a sudden we had like 300 people lined up around the building to just come to this night that we just, just started out of pure passion just because we liked the, the music or whatever, and we're like, wow, you know, I think we got something here. And then, uh, from then, uh, I, I did that for a couple years, ran the event company, ran the night, I DJ'd about four nights a week uh, locally. All my friends are moving on to real jobs, I'm still stuck in the city. Everyone's like, Henry, dude, what are you doing? You, 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 you gotta figure out your life. My parents were a little bit upset with me. Uh, I didn't have any friends that even lived there anymore because they had all had, had left and went on to uh, bigger and better things. So I just hit this point, was like, you know what, I, I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna be here my whole life. I, I just. I feel like I have to take this to the next level. And one of my friends told me, he's, he took me outside, I was at a Tiesto concert one night. He's like, Henry, if, if you wanna go in there and do what he's doing, you have to learn how to make your own music. I was like, all right, I'll figure it out. So 
the next day, I remember I, I, I went home, I downloaded the, uh, the music making software, which is called Ableton Live, and I just locked myself in my room pretty much every day, eight to 10 hours a day for the next couple years. Learned how to make music. Luckily, I did play saxophone here at Benjamin School, and I, I didn't think that would come in handy in any, in any way in the future. But I knew how to read music, and I had a basic understanding of like music knowledge. So I kind of took that, built off that, learned how to make music, and then um, I started making a couple of demos, and I put them on a website called SoundCloud. And uh, SoundCloud's cool because a lot of new uh, artists get discovered off SoundCloud. So I, I put some stuff on SoundCloud and got like two or three thousand plays here and there. And then um, it's, it, it all kind of happened really fast. And then all of a sudden, uh, these DJs started playing my music. So I would like listen to like Tiesto's podcast and he'd have one of my songs in there. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. I was like, this is as good as it's going to get. So then uh, I, I still had, a, had this like vision to take, take everything further. You know, I knew dance music was getting popular. Uh, I, I started building up my profile online with my like, social media and my music, and I, I felt like the only way to really take it to the next level was move to Los Angeles. And I feel like uh, LA has a little bit of a stigma against it because a lot of people don't make it when they move out to LA for various things, particularly the music industry. So it was, I, I, I deliberated on, a, a little bit on it, and uh, I just decided to go ahead and risk it. So I moved, moved to LA. I got to LA. I lived in a... 600 square foot apartment, probably paid like $3,000 a month because it's ridiculous out there. And then um, I, I just put myself out there. I went out every single night. I would lie to people that I worked for some company to get on a guest list to get backstage. And I just uh, put in the time networking there and I started meeting people. I started meeting other DJs. And then uh, at that time, my music was getting a little bit better and I, I sent some demos out. I probably sent out 2,000 emails maybe to get one email back and that one email changed my life. I sent uh, an email to this DJ, his name's Hardwell. I sent an email to his record label and he was the first uh, DJ to sign me to his label. And from there it all kind of like had a snowball effect. I uh, just remember waking up one day and I like looked at my like Twitter DMs and I was like just going through Twitter, I looked at my DMs and it was like Skrillex, Diplo, Tiesto, DJ Snake, all these guys uh, DMing me like, hey man, I love your music, uh, uh, can you send me some new stuff, I want to sign some stuff to my label, blah, 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 and that was kind of like the, the aha moment where I like, was like, whoa, this is actually happening and I can do this for real. And uh, it's kind of hard to like soak that all in because your, your idols and all these people that you've looked up to for so long are just like contacting you because they like your music and it's just kind of, it's kind of surreal. But uh, so I, I kept on going with things and then sure enough I met an agent and a manager out in LA and then I'm playing tours all over the world and it just happens like that. I would say it happened all in about like a two year time span and they're putting me on festivals, I'm playing all these things and it's just like, I, I feel like I didn't truly have time to enjoy it because it happened so fast but uh, so I played uh, Ultra Music Festival, EDC Las Vegas, Electric Zoo, Hard Summer, and I get to tour. I, I usually go over to Asia and tour a lot, South America, Europe. And um, yeah, so uh, basically now um, I'm still continually touring, and uh, now I'm a little bit more focused on writing music. So I'm kind of getting to the point now where I'm able to write music with some of my idols. and. Creatively, that's where I'm at right now. I just really just want to work on creating music that's going to last for a lifetime. So, um, yeah. So along my journey, I definitely learned, uh, learned, learned a couple things that I feel like that uh, you guys could, could take to heart and could be beneficial to you. Um, I just want to let you guys know that it's okay to, to be different and pursue a different career path. You know, that, that's a pretty stereotypical thing to say. You know, be different, be you, but... You know, unfortunately, it's not easy to be different or be you. Um, you know, there's pressures from society, pressures from your friends, pressures from your parents. And uh, can you imagine when I, when I called my dad on the phone one day and I was like, Dad, uh, I'm, I'm going to be a DJ. You just paid for my entire college, uh, college experience and, yeah, I'm going to go be a DJ now. He was not happy at all. And uh, same with my friends. Uh, my friends in my fraternity, friends in high school. I'm like, yeah, guys, uh, I, I think I'm going to just chill here and be a DJ. And they're like, yeah, huh, good luck, dude. But uh, it, it, I think it's kind of out of love, you know, they, they want the best for you and they don't know if you're taking it seriously or not. 
But as I, as I started taking things seriously, uh, they saw the passion I had for it, and slowly everybody came to support me. So um, a word of advice, definitely if you guys want to pursue like an alter alternative uh, career path, just take it seriously, and people are going to see that you're taking it seriously, and they'll start supporting you. And um, I think I'm lucky to have been part of such a close, tight-knit community here at Benjamin. At the time, I, I didn't realize it, you know. Uh, I, like I said, I didn't really fit in academically or athletically anything here. But my first few core supporters throughout my career were friends that I made at Benjamin and the whole community. You know, people from my grade, people two grades above me, two grades below me, they were, I saw them at my shows, they were buying my music online uh, and, and supporting me. And I can't uh, stress to you guys how important that is, that the community that you guys are like, have at your fingertips here. These are, these are friends that you're going to have for the rest of your life. Um, and it's kind of hard to like not take it for granted while you're here. So I just like, I hope that like a lot of you guys can put your differences aside and realize that the people sitting to the left and to the right of you, these, these people are going to play a valuable role in your life. So uh, thank you.